Natasha. Debbie. Show. The show. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> Just two patriotic girls. Learning about the world. So please, don't take us the wrong way. Hey, Sweden. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. We're really excited about doing these episodes on um, the World Wide Wednesdays and um, Sweden. First of all, I have to say this about Sweden. Um, we still don't have any friends that have joined us on our live videos that we've done on our Facebook. That's right. So try to catch us on mm -hmm. a live. And we've, we've seen some Swedish friends come over on the Facebook page and comment, mm -hmm. but yet to have anyone um, come onto the live videos when we do those. And I will say this as well. All the Swedish people that have been watching us and commenting on our videos have been so nice and so kind. So thank you. You have been very kind. And thank you for welcoming, welcoming us. And welcoming, too. Welcoming. Welcoming. I don't know. That <laughs> could mean language. something in some language somewhere. It could. I don't, I don't know what that means. <laughs> probably something bad. And thank you for those dime bars. Uh, yeah, I just mm. ate one before I came in here. I know. Uh -huh. I think you had the last one. Anyway, uh -huh. we're happy to have you guys with us today. And if you don't mind, please hit the like button if you enjoy our content. And consider subscribing, but please check out our other content. Make sure you want to be a part of this crazy thing we have going on here. Yes, our show. the show. <laughs> Speaking of the show, today's show, we haven't learned much about, we have a little tiny bit, tiny bit. on culture and we want to know more. So mm -hmm. this video is called 19 weird, or are they, things Swedish people do that you should do too. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you do it. So please let us know in the comments if you do. Are they really that weird? Are they gonna be that different? I don't know. And that you should do too. Do we want to? Should we? I don't know. Let's find out. We'll find out if we want to. Let's find out together, starting now. Hey, hey everyone. I hope you are doing amazingly. Today I'm gonna share the craziest, most wonderful, and best Swedish traditions that I think you should try too. Oh, From good. how we cut our pizza, to how we raise our children, oh, to how we sleep, here are some of my favorite Swedish traditions that I think everyone in the whole entire world should do. So okay. let's get started. I'm we interested. cut our pizza with scissors. This is also a minimalist hack because you no longer need to use a silly pizza cutter that you literally cannot use for any- Hold up. This is different. I mean, I thought it was going to be the shape. Was Whether scissors? it be a pie or in the, the squares. I don't know. What I to did say. not know it was going to be actual utensil. What? Of how you. I, my first job use. ever was at a pizza place. So I'm a professional pizza cutter. You are. We didn't use scissors. I've yeah. never heard of that in my life. Interesting. And I wonder why. Hopefully she'll give us I'm a little insight that back. Here. And sorry, we're still having space bar problems. We're going to figure this out someday. We, we've always been low budget. We just came back <laughs> to it. Okay, so we're back at 18. Here, let's go. Oh, I forgot. I can't even turn it on with that. I roll to do. So let's get started. Okay. We cut our pizza with scissors. So this is also a minimalist hack because you no longer need to use a silly pizza cutter that you literally cannot use for anything. Instead, just use your kitchen scissors I use my to hands. cut pizza. Cutting pizza is such an easy and fun way to hmm. slice pizza. One of my favorite hacks for a happy marriage and a Swedish tradition that I grew up with is to have separate duvets. Having separate duvets makes so much more sense. Mm. It is so much more comfortable. You never have to fight with your partner over a blanket and it just makes a world of difference. If you have one duvet, it's big. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yep, I pause it for you. Well, that's interesting because I have... So we're kind of already Swedish. We are, we have, <laughs> we have Swedish uh, ancestry in our DNA uh -huh. and guess what we do? Wait, well, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> we have separate blankets. Yes. Duvets. Or duvets. Whatever. We do. Mm hmm Embarrassingly. Because someone... I knew it was coming. Is a blanket hog. Probably. Yes. She has cocooned. And someone gives off so much body heat <laughs> that, again, don't let her in your ice hotel. Nope. It'll just... Hey, I'd be welcome in Sweden. I'd keep you warm. Yeah, that's not warm. That's like, <laughs> that's third degree burns. <laughs> but no, that's funny. We do that. Mm -hmm. and, and the big reason for me was her body heat. She gives off too much of it. A heart steel in the blankets. <laughs> I do cocoon myself in you it. You do. I love it. So, okay. One for two so far. We already there do we this. Go. Okay, back to the video. Sorry. 
big and bulky and it's crazy, just try two duvets and see if it makes you feel any better. I agree. Speaking of duvets and bedding, the next thing that is really important that you should try that we all do in Sweden is that we have a duvet cover and a duvet inner mm -hmm. and a sheet to make our bed. Okay. We don't have any top sheets. We don't have any blankets. That is Wait. absolutely disgusting. <laughs> Well, I thought this Sorry, but it is because you don't really wash them as often. Yes, we do. You need okay. to have a duvet if it's cold in your country, and you need to put the duvet inside of the duvet cover, and then you wash the duvet cover weekly, and this way you have a very clean bed. When I first came to New Zealand, I was- I got your pause. Okay. So we change our sheets- Often. Weekly, like you change your duvets. It's not more weekly. than weekly. We do it a little bit right. more than weekly. So- But we have a top sheet. I can't sleep without a top sheet. Mm -hmm. I have to have a top sheet. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, we do get ours washed yeah. just, and then it's covered with the sheet. So you don't have to wash the comforter or quilt or duvet mm -hmm. nearly as often. It's not so, disgusting. It's just a difference. You just wash it with everything else. We just throw everything in the wash at one time. Yeah. And sheets are so much thinner that they go in the washer and dryer quick and easy. Yeah. In and out. Yeah. They're done in no time was taught about the idea of a top sheet and you sort of put the duvet on top but you never really encase it. But that means that when you move okay. around throughout the bed, your body will touch the duvet inner and you simply cannot wash that once a week because it doesn't last as long as if you do that. So absolutely, uh -huh. if you have a duvet inner and it's cold in your country, put a duvet outer on it. And in the summer when it's too warm, you just put the duvet inner away and you just sleep with the duvet outer as a blanket. Easy. One of my favorite Swedish sayings is something like, there is no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. Just bad clothing. Mm -hmm. Very literal yeah. and very Swedish. But as a child, this was normally printed on our weekly mail or at kindergarten or at school, which basically meant for our parents to remember to put proper clothing on us because we would be outside all day, no matter the weather. I think oh. most people these days tend to stay inside when it's bad weather outside instead of just mm -hmm. going out there. But by putting on proper clothing, it makes it so much easier to be outside in all weathers. And it's so much better for your health to be outside and breathe in the microbiome Agreed. rather than just staying inside and watching TV. Another Swedish health hack for you guys. Well, One of the things that I didn't think was weird, <laughs> but that became obvious to me the moment I moved abroad was the fact that we don't talk about race. The first time I heard the word Caucasian, I was 20 and living in Japan. What? And before that, I had never heard any of these words. And it's really? just not something we talk about. Which brings me on to the next point is that you well, never on, have to on. disclose. Slow down. So she never heard the word Caucasian until she was 20. I mean, when you go to the doctor's office, you know, or anything, like a lot mm -hmm. of paperwork you fill out, you have to fill out your race, at least in America. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess apparently they don't have to over there, yeah. which is quite. Is that true? That, that would be kind of nice. It just would be, to be nice. A person. I agree. <laughs> just to be people. Yeah. Not a huh. descriptive person. <sighs> to I know use what you're trying words. to say. <laughs> and I think you all know what she means by that. No, but that's interesting. Huh. Mm -hmm. That's actually like quite that. shocking. I like it. And I do like that too. I do. Huh. Let's hear more this information if you for example go to the bank or going to the university and that information is absolutely not okay. necessary for the bank to know when mm -hmm. i'm opening my bank account and frankly it's ridiculous so do what I the agree. swedish people do I agree i guess Whilst we're speaking about politically sensitive subjects, let's speak about children. In Sweden, mm -hmm. we treat our children with respect and we treat them as already humans, which is something I really, really enjoy and I think everyone should do. Kids don't have to address older people in a certain way. Kids don't really have to act in a certain way. Kids are really allowed to be kids, which mm -hmm. means they're allowed to make mistakes. They're allowed to be upset. They don't have to hug someone if they don't want to. They don't have to kiss someone if they don't want to. Just Great. completely reasonable things that I think every country should adopt kids mm -hmm. are the best thing in the world so i absolutely think we should treat kids with the utmost respect now this one i don't know if it's Agreed. for all of sweden but it's definitely something i've experienced a lot of times but that is people when i get invited to dinner parties people ask me is there something you don't eat my goodness this has saved so much trouble having a dinner party or going to a dinner party i normally tell my best friend when i go to dinners at hearst that i don't eat coriander or cilantro because i really really don't like it and it makes it a lot easier one of the and pausing there. Yep. Well, and you're allergic to it. So we actually do this in America. Uh, and again, it's it, America's big. So mm -hmm. I can't say all Americans do this, right? Exactly. Um, we do. And we our friends and family do. do. Yes. Um, and whenever we invite people over, if especially if it's our first time coming to our house for dinner mm -hmm. or something, we always say, hey, is there anything you don't like? Anything you don't eat? Mm -hmm. uh, Debbie and I don't eat beef. We eat other meats, but we don't eat beef. Yep. Um, and if someone doesn't ask me, I tell them, by the way, 
we don't need beef to say now. <laughs> yeah, if someone's inviting us and they didn't yeah. ask, then yeah. we obviously uh, volunteer mm -hmm. that information ahead of time so that we don't get there and like, oh. Crap, well, we can't we eat any of this. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I agree. If you don't already do this, you should do this. I think it's respectful. Exactly. It's kind. Mm -hmm. um, and it does make sense to, to just yeah. do that. And it, it, it is a lot nicer coming from the host or hostess to ask you. Then you have to say it. Then you have to speak up and yeah. say something. Yeah, because it almost sounds like you're being picky or rude. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't like, no, it's right. just, I don't eat that, so I'm not going exactly. to. Exactly. But it would make no sense not to ask because you're maybe wasting something. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you want to be respectful of your so, guest and whatever their dietary needs are. I agree with the Swedish on this one. If you don't already do it, we should, we should all do yep. it. Back at it. The most important Swedish traditions is being whole and clean. Whole and now, clean. what does this mean? <laughs> this is know. a deeply rooted tradition that goes so far back in Swedish oh. history, but ultimately it means to always present yourself as best as you possibly can. Every time we had friends over, my family would just massively clean the entire house, not oh, because yeah. it was necessarily dirty, but mm -hmm. it's so important to uphold mm -hmm. the standard of being whole and clean in Swedish society. Another thing that I think Hold is on. crazy. I'm going to stop there again too because my mom. No one was coming to our house unless she had a day to clean the dang thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> had to tell. Yep. And it was most of the time if I wanted a friend over, it was, no, the house isn't clean. Mm -hmm. Did you have that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I figured Definitely had to clean the house, especially when you're having a mm -hmm. large amount of company coming over. Um, I wonder if this translates down from the sweetest ancestry. Who knows? Yeah. Tradition, 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 tradition. Some things never get lost. I was thinking it coming more from like the 60s, but... Well, that's you know it. when it was you know the perfect housewife and the family right. and but interesting I'm glad I'm that's nice to I, know. I like it see that other countries have and that we don't have is that we don't really use the expression from scratch Not growing really. up I didn't know that you could buy cake mixes I had only seen it on TV I had never really heard of it I didn't know you really? could buy any sort of pre-made food or something that we call really? alfabricat, which technically means half processed foods. Of course, this might Hold differ. On, I, want to, I want to say it. I had never really heard of it. I didn't know you could buy any sort of pre-made food or something that we call alfabricat. Alfabricat. Mm. Huh? That huh? sounded good. Was it? Sounded good to me. Please rate me in the comments if it was good. If it was bad, don't rate me. <laughs> okay, sorry. Which technically means half processed foods. Of course, this might okay. differ a little bit, but in general, we don't say that we make things from scratch in Sweden. If you make a cake, you will make it from scratch. <laughs> that, is, that is just how uh -huh. you make a cake. There's no other way to make a cake. You either buy it from the bakery or you make it from scratch. Okay. And I think that's also one of the reasons why we are quite a healthy country. When and I'm pausing there again too because I concur. For one, store bought stuff sucks in comparison to anything you make from scratch. Usually, yes. I yes. have a fidget spinner in my hand, sorry. <laughs> and I have to ask, so does that mean you don't have cake mix in a box? Apparently not. I mean, that's what it sounded like she said, but... Let us know. You can't buy a cake mix in the store? Or can you, and just most people don't. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> this has become a very deep subject now. <laughs> We're gonna be talking about this for a while after this video. <laughs> like, hold on. Okay. One of the best Swedish culture traditions that you've probably already heard about is fika. A fika, fika. is when you have a coffee, normally, or a tea, with a sweet treat, and you normally have it in the afternoon, but you can actually have it whenever. <gasps> and this is one of the most yeah, common things we do when we uh -huh. go on dates or meet up with our friends. It's so cozy, it's really fun. Let's do this. I also really like that it's one of the few things in Sweden where you can date someone or meet someone without drinking alcohol. Now, yes! Oh, yes! Now, we can use different things in different languages, especially in Italian. Sorry, I keep pausing this. I'm sorry, but I love that. I love uh -huh. that you said that because culture and society, again, recovering alcoholic, mm -hmm. it's so alcohol-based, but it I is. love that. We need to find more information out about fika because mm -hmm. I want to do that. Yeah. I mean, is it just I'm eating something sweet it. and drinking coffee? Is that it? Yep. Sounds like it's... We have fika like 20 times a day lately. No. <laughs> Every time we walk through the kitchen and all the Swedish snacks are still sitting there. there yeah, though there's like three left, Debbie. <laughs> no, no, there's not much left, now. No. Okay, sorry. I just get excited about this. Let's move on. Italian. So I would use it with caution and use it only when you're in Sweden. 
Going back to childcare, another thing that I really appreciate about Swedish culture that you should try if you have children is co-sleeping. My parents huh? co-slept with me and my brother. Everyone uh -huh, I know, okay. I think, co-slept. My sister co-slept with me or with her parents when she was with them. And I've never ever had any issues, heard any issues, or hear anyone talk badly about co-sleeping. Co-sleeping with your baby makes so much more sense because you don't have to wake up in the middle of the night and go into another room. Also, your baby's brain is not developed enough to to know that you're not in the room, which makes it feel unsafe. Co-sleeping is literally <laughs> the best option for sleeping with your baby. My dad built this really clever little hat. I'm just saying real quick, I just think when it comes to this kind of stuff, it's up to every parent out there how you should do that. I don't mm -hmm. think I don't think anyone should dictate how anyone wants to sleep with their baby or raise their child. That's on you. That's yeah. up to you. <laughs> Full disclosure, that's the Natasha New and Debbie show. New children here? Not gonna comment, comment yes. on that that's one. That's the Natasha and Debbie show. Actual, like, what's the word I'm looking for here? Moto thoughts. Thoughts. That yep. works. Yeah. <laughs> Disclaimer. You do what you want. That's as right. As long as it's the right, not bad stuff. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, don't Sorry. be breaking the law, but. Don't do anything stupid. <sighs> Half crib that he put next to the bed with a mattress and made it level to the bed. So I could be in the bed, co-sleeping there at the same time as my mom was in the bed. Co-sleeping shouldn't be a term, I don't think. It shouldn't be a trend. It shouldn't be an idea. It should just be the most common way for sleeping with your baby. Another thing that is yeah. common in Sweden but isn't very common abroad is that both men and women call themselves feminists. In Sweden, people are generally more educated about feminism than in other countries. And I really like that they use think. the word more casually mm -hmm. and without so much attachment to it that comes from other countries. A weird thing about Sweden that I thought was a bit very quite strange <laughs> is that our school is a lot easier than any other school in the world. Huh? Now, I don't easier. know exactly how accurate this is, mm -hmm. but I know that in general in Sweden, we are very educated. However, our school, especially I think middle school and preschool, is a lot easier than, for example, in England or in New Zealand. We have way less assignments, way less homework, but huh. somehow it still works. Unfortunately, this trend is changing and we're becoming a bit more like the rest of the world, but okay. I really hmm. think homework is ridiculous and we shouldn't have it. So that's that. Well, we all thought that. <laughs> one weird exactly. thing we do in Sweden, but I think we shouldn't do, so disregard this one, is that we don't really date. Although I'm what? Swedish, I've never dated a Swedish guy because what? I think I've only had two Swedish guys ever hit on me in my entire life. Oh, wow. But in general, we don't really date. We don't really have a period of dating where you can see other people or normally you're just sort of not together and then you're sort of together. Dating in Sweden is very weird. I'm confused. Uh, that is mm -hmm. why I've been so unsuccessful at it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I find it a bit uncomfortable. And I think Sweden, in fact, should adopt how people date in other countries because I think it makes way more sense and it's a much more adult way of dating. Okay, well, if she's unsuccessful at it, it's because they don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> so please give us more information on this whole dating thing. Or not dating thing. <laughs> just for general knowledge. It's like any personal, just Oh, any I want personal stuff. No, leave us the juicy details. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. I don't understand. Because she said we don't date. Then at the end, she said, I haven't been successful at it. And I'm like, uh, well, it's because you don't do it. I don't so get it. How do you meet people and then get married? And didn't she also say earlier that you have Fika on dates? I'm a little confused here. Yeah, so help us out. It's just confusing. Yeah, there's a little. Help us out. Help us. Something we do in Sweden is that we learn English very early. This also makes so much sense because it's easier to learn a language when you're young. And yeah, it's true in Norway too, right? Most people speak mm -hmm. English, which is such a useful skill to have if you want to live in another country or have any job where you don't work in Sweden. All right, so we're going even more political time for religion. No. Yay, politics. One thing we don't do in Sweden is we're not really religious or go to church, even though Wikipedia might say otherwise. So this has changed since then, but when I grew up and my entire generation, we couldn't choose to be enrolled in the Swedish church system. That just happened automatically when we were born, no matter if we were baptized or not. We just went straight into the Swedish church system, which is also the system you have to be in if you want to be buried in a churchyard or if you want to be married in a church, uh, if you want to get baptized in a church, etc., mm -hmm. etc. So this is a quite fun fact compared to other countries, because if you look at Wikipedia, it says most Swedish people are religious, but that's simply because we are enrolled in church. Now okay. say what you want about religion, but mm. I for one am a person who thinks that we should practice what we preach. And since most people have lots of sex before marriage, drink, 
a ridiculous amount of in alcohol Sweden. and do all <laughs> other sorts of gluttonous things, um, I think it makes complete sense that most people don't go to church. I remember going to church in kindergarten for our summer ending, and I remember my priest had leather pants and played a rock and roll guitar, which we all thought was very, very fun. We are a land hmm. of wonderful and quirky, weird, strange traditions. Hmm? In Sweden, we have something called jantelagen, which practically means be humble oh, but all in Sweden, we have something called jantelagen, which practically Jantelogen. means be humble, mm -hmm. but okay. also never talk well about yourself. <laughs> so there are pros and cons about this law. It's an unwritten law. But one of the good things about it is that Swedish people are in general very comfortable and quiet, or maybe better is to say not loud people. So it's very nice to be around Swedish people. No one ever yells, no one ever tries to really be the center of attention, no one really, you know, speaks really loudly. One of my favorite things we do in Sweden, which does not work in English, is that we don't really have a word for please. Now you can use snälla, which means like most kindly, or can you kindly, or you can use tack, which means thank you, but we don't really have a word for please. Okay. I love learning languages because this is those little parts about a language in a culture that you won't really learn unless you know the language. So I love speaking English, I love using the word please, but I also love speaking Swedish and being able to sneak in a tak or a snälla where Swedish people normally don't and sound like the most <laughs> friendly and polite person in the world. So, so just right there, um, I don't know if this is in other places in the world, but in some parts of, of the US, you'll use the word please in a context of if you didn't hear somebody. Mm -hmm. So it'll be like, uh, here, say something. I, I want to go down the street and buy some uh, gasoline. <laughs> That's your something. I don't know. That's your random something. Try to say something. <laughs> Please? Yeah, I want to go down the street, buy some gasoline. And, and that's more of like an older generation. Yeah. Um, but I still hear people do that every now and then, mm -hmm. and it's, even in our area. I don't know if that's common in other countries. Yeah. Or even please for a yes. Would you like a Coke? Oh, please. See? Yeah, that's true. I never thought about that. Yeah. I say that a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying yes, I'll say please. Please. Yep. You do. Yeah, I do it to you a lot, don't I? You'll you ask do. me, like, you want a sandwich? Please. Yep. You do do that. Or hell yeah. <laughs> okay. Just let that, maybe if you didn't know, that might interest you. I don't know. But that's interesting. Oh, it's a win-win. So, okay, my friends, I did not think we'd go this political. I have written this video down. It's very funny because when I translate these very regular Swedish ideas to English, they suddenly become so much more political. Mm. Swedish people are in general mm. extremely nice and it's such a nice culture to live in. And I think that's why so many people move back to Sweden when they want to have a family oh, because it's such a safe and reasonable and wholesome place for kids to grow up. And part of that is because mm these lovely and quirky ideas that we have. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I had so much fun speaking about my Swedish traditions, especially since I'm not in Sweden anymore. It makes me so happy to be able to share something of how I grew up with the rest of the world. Alrighty, um, well. She seems so sweet and kind. I know, I know, <laughs> like, she really I would be friends with her and hang out. She seems like she'd be happy all Well, the she time. ends up watching this video. Hi. We'd Hi. love to be your friend. Um, no, that was really cool. There were some pretty shocking things there, but I thought it was funny, the whole separate duvets. Mm -hmm. We already do that. Yep. I agree. I think you should all do it too. Um, now, in the wintertime, though, I will steal Debbie and be like, get under my blankets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need your heat. And then after five minutes. For like five minutes. Yeah, then, then she's get like, out get out and get your own blanket. <laughs> <laughs> she burned down my ice hotel. Um, <laughs> I did not melt her eyes. <laughs> um, but the whole like race thing, love that. Mm -hmm. I want to adopt that for sure. One on here for sure that I really thought was everyone should do. As we said, we do it as well. Exactly. Ask what people don't eat before mm -hmm. you have them over for, for any meal, please. Yeah, when you're inviting somebody over, check yeah. with them. Check with them. It's so, it's just, yeah. Um, but the shocking one here on me, um, this was definitely the whole, we make everything from scratch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's mind-blowing and uh, definitely want more information about that in the comments. And I don't understand your dating situation. So please yes. clear that up for us. That was a Help bit confusing. Help us out. <laughs> yeah, that was confusing. Um, but uh, I did enjoy the video. And um, if you did, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to our lovely little channel here. Um, but uh, yeah, I want to learn more about the culture and we're definitely going to try to find more stuff to dive in to learn even Absolutely. more. Absolutely. And if you please add to this list, we would really appreciate that. Yeah, Some other things. And again, if you're on Facebook,
please come over and see us at the Natasha and Debbie show. And hopefully you can catch us on a live. And join our Patreon, It's just random too. when we do that, but hopefully you can catch us there and we can chat more one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And if you want more content, exclusive for Patreon only. So check out the links in the description of this and all of our videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. We do appreciate you. And um, again, thank you for being so kind and welcoming to us when we started looking yes. at Sweden here. We appreciate it. We're not done, so um, mm -hmm. we got a lot to learn. So thank you, and we'll see you on the next episode. Until then, please, love like jazz. Be as strong as Tyson. Bye, guys. Bye.